First thing I did is to head to the Google and search for sci-fi weapons. I collected a couple of references for my weapon into a free software called PureF. Always do little research and use as much as references as possible before starting your project. I keep my references on my secondary monitor. If you don't have a secondary monitor, you can use uh, any device or your phone for references. Now open Photoshop, create a new file, keep the resolution at least a thousand pixels for a better quality. First, sketch out the basic shapes for the object. You can add uh, details afterwards. I'm using Huon graphics tablet. I use it for drawing, sculpting and while texturing. I bought it for 8,000 rupees, which is around $100 about four years ago. This model is much cheaper right now. I prefer it because it has a pressure sensor and it's much easier to draw with. Even the cheaper alternative is thousand times better than the mouse. All right. So I designed this handgun first. The weapon I'm making is gonna have three different parts. This one is a primary part, which is a handgun. This has two attachments. The second one is barrel. When attached, the gun will act as a shotgun and is much better in close range. The third part is buttstock. When attached, the gun will act as an assault rifle, which is obviously higher fire rate. I'll share more about the stats and everything about this gun mechanism into my devlogs. And this one is about the workflow I use. So <laughs> we should stick to it. And if you love game devlogs, then subscribe to this channel because I upload devlogs quite often. Okay, don't do that right away. Just watch one of my devlogs and then decide. I'll put the link down below or at the end screen. All right, so you can add more details, add harder stroke and color if you want, but I'm gonna keep it as is and gonna experiment with the colors while texturing. Now save the image and open Blender. Simply drag and drop created image to the Blender and start working. Start modeling by adding a cube, creating basic shape for the handgun. Add subdivisions, add just the vertices according to the shape. You can create and add references for front view, but I went with only one side. It wasn't necessary for me. Add a mirror modify if your model is symmetrical. Add extra objects and subdivisions wherever needed, but make sure stick to the lowest polygon possible. This is a model for game. Here I'm really going for just a basic shape and try to shape it according to the reference. You don't really need to be perfect, so don't add too much vertices and model it edge to edge. I added extra cubes and planes, adding subdivisions and extruding to create the second and the third part of the game, barrel and stock. And yes, don't forget the mirror modifier. Before UV unwrapping, apply the mirror modifiers for all objects. If you ever find UV unwrapping boring, you can of course select all the objects, hit U and select smart UV project. This is a shortcut, but I don't prefer that because it will confuse you in the future because it just spread the faces evenly spaced but spreads randomly. So you don't even know uh, which object is unwrapped where it is placed and it's just a mess. You can still go for it, maybe. Okay, let's start over. Select an object, go into the edit mode. Now select the edges in order to mark as seams. Select in a way that all the faces of the object should be spread properly in UV island. This means you need to keep the edge length ratio nearly the same in the UV island and actual object, but still keep the object intact. Let's take a cube here. If I select these three edges and mark them seam by U and mark seam, the object will be still intact, but the UVs won't spread properly. If I hit U and unwrap, you can see that these faces edges are even, but others are not. The face in the back is even tinier than others. So in order to unwrap the cube UVs properly, you will need to select these edges and mark seam. Now you can see this made two different face loops, this one and this one. So if I unwrap it, the magic happens. So keep that in mind while unwrapping. And if you have zero experience on wrapping UVs, I prefer you start from the cube, understand the edge flow and slowly increase the difficulty. So I unwrap every object in this way, keeping the face flow and keeping at least a half of the object uh, intact on the island. It depends on how tricky is the mesh of the object is. Then you can decide if you need to unwrap in, in multiple parts. The cube is simple, so it can be unwrapped in single intact object. Try this method, take your time, experiment with different kinds of objects and don't just use smart UV project all the time. And also like the video, it really helps the channel to grow and the algorithm loves if anyone hits the like button so don't forget after successfully unwrapping the uvs let's start with the next step sculpting i select an object and into the edit mode i select couple of edges where i want the edges to be sharper we're gonna use the modifier multi-resolution which is kind of acts like a subdivision surface modifier so after increasing the resolution it's gonna smooth the sharp edges so I use the edge crease tool, which keep edges sharp. Then you can control how much sharp edge you want. Hit shift A to use the edge crease tool and slide the mouse to crease it 100% and keep it below 100% if you want a little smoother too. Duplicate the object you want to sculpt and into the modify tab, select add modifier and add multi-resolution modifier. 
hit subdivide four times, lower the level viewport to one or zero to limit the memory usage. I mostly use these seven brushes for sculpting, so I added them to favorite to make them handy. And from these seven, I mostly use layer, crease, and pinch a lot. I use the layer brush to add and subtract the thick layers and crease around them and use pinch to pinch the edges around the layer. Then use a smooth brush to smooth the sharp and harder sculpted part. You can use symmetry to mirror the sculpting. You can add details however you want, be it sculpting or modeling. Use hard surface modeling on the duplicated object by adding extra subdivisions, reshaping, however you want, rather than using a multi-resolution modifier for sculpting. But I went with this workflow so I can manage the number of polygons in the viewport, sculpting and rendering. And this won't be harder on my computer's GPU. So the model is in high poly in sculpt mode and low poly in the object mode. You can add as many details as you want, subdivide again, increase the resolution so that you can add smaller details. If you buy me take draw on the inner part of the object this happens and to prevent it just go to the brush properties and select advanced and enable the option front faces only and this won't happen again you can use a stabilized stroke option under the stroke in the brush settings to use the smooth stroke i usually do it when the details are smaller if you're sculpting with the mouse this option will be a little helpful i use inflate or deflate brush to add screws and fasteners i usually go with the spare or constant fall off or use custom to customize it and just tap a couple of times to inflate it and make it look like some kind of fasteners use crease brush for slot head for screws. Use the same approach for every object by duplicating, adding multi-resolution modifier and start sculpting. For some objects, you'll need to add a couple of edge loops to make the faces even. I start sculpting and use the same tools and brushes for sculpting. Layer, crease, pinch and inflate for fastness. Make sure to use references. Sculpting takes a lot of time and the more details you want to add, the more time it will take. So take your time, don't rush. If you're inexperienced in sculpting like me, it's gonna take a lot of time to complete the process, but it's worth the spending time. After completing all the objects, we can go ahead and start baking the normals to low poly mesh. Disable all the objects in the render viewport except the one you choose to bake first. Keep its low poly and high poly version enabled. Make sure the cycles is selected as a render engine. Bump up the value of the samples under the render to 200 and set the device as GPU compute. If it's not available, go to the edit preferences system, select the cycles render device as CUDA and enable the GPU and disable the CPU if it's enabled. Back into the render settings, under the performance, under the memory enable use tiling and increase the tile size to 4k because i'm gonna use 4k image resolution for baking now into the layer properties enable denoising data head over to the compositing tab and make sure the use node is enabled and add denoise node in between render layers and compositing node as shown now head over to the shading tab add a new material to the low poly object into the shader editor add a new image node by shift a hit new name it for selected object for the height and width i'm going for 4k resolution keep the alpha channel or disable it it doesn't really matter here and okay into the render settings under the bake, select bake type to normal, enable select to active. Extrusion is, it makes the active object inflated by specific distance for baking. So keep it to 0.1. Max ray distance is a maximum distance for matching points between the active and selected objects. This means the low poly object throw rays out from its normals to calculate how further the high poly object is. So set it to 0.05. I needed to experiment with these values to see which value works for me. This will work for you too. If it doesn't, try changing the value slightly. Now select the high poly or sculpted object first, then select the low poly object. Into the shader editor, make sure the baking image node is selected. And now hit bake, wait for it to complete. I'm using Blender version 3.0 for baking normals only, which renders faster. So the baking process will be even faster than 2.93. Save the baked image to desired directory. Now disable current objects and enable the next one, both low poly and high poly. Select the low poly and and add the same baking material to it. Add a new image node in the shader editor. Create the new 4K image with the new object's name. Select sculpted object, then select low poly and select the corresponding image node and hit bake. After baking, save the image. Repeat the same process for remaining objects, enabling the objects, adding new images and baking. Combine the baked normals into the single texture by dragging and dropping those baked images one by one into Photoshop on top of each other. In my case, I baked total of 11 objects and exported the UV layout of all the objects for reference. Select the top layer for the image. Now select the portion of the image where the subject is by using any selection tool. I use the lasso tool. Right click and select inverse to inverse the selection. Select the image layer and delete the selection. Repeat this for every layer except the last layer. Save the image to the desired directory. Now after completing the normals, let's create textures. Here I have created a material that consists of three different types of textures. In these two, I used ready-made PBR textures. Here for the first texture, metals diffuse texture is connected to the color ramps factor and the color ramps factor is connected to the principal BSDS base color to recolor it. 
Then the principal BSDF's output is connected to the mix shader's second shader input with a 50% factor. And the first shader of the mix shader node is connected to another principal BSDF's output, which consists of basic scratch plastic I used for the scratches. I added the color ramp to the roughness to control the intensity of the roughness. Also for normal, I used the same plastic displacement map and connected it to the bump node's height. Added the baked and combined normal map connected to the normal map node's color and set the strength to 1.5 units and its output is connected to the bumps normal. Into the metal shader node, I also added the baked normal map and connected it to color 2 of the mix RGB node and the metal normals are connected to the color 1. Then the color output is connected to the normal map node and set the strength to 1.5 units. Then its output is connected to the bump normal value. The metal's displacement map is connected to the height value of the bump node. Also, the strength of the bump value works for the displacement map, so I lowered it to 0.275. And lastly, the bump node is connected to the normal value of principal BSDF shader. Both textures are mixed with the mixed shader with 50% value for each. Then again, its output is connected to another mixed shader's first shader. And to the second shader, I connected the third principal BSDF shader I'm gonna use for texturing. I created four new image nodes, one for secondary color which is gonna be red, second is for blacks, third is for gray shade and fourth is for screws and fasteners. I texture painted these with only black and white which I'm gonna show in a minute but before that let's connect these. Connect the image color to the base color and factor of the second mix shader. I painted the black color on white for this one so add an invert node between them to invert the colors. Add a mix RGB node, set the first color to red and the second color to black. Connect the black shader image color to the factor of the mix RGB node. Duplicate the mix RGB node and select the blending mode to screen, factor to 1 and put it in between invert and mix shader. Connect the color 2 to the black image shader's output. Duplicate first mix RGB node and add it in between secondary color and the base color. Make sure the screen RGB's color output is connected to its factor. Connect the first mix RGB shader output to its color 2. You can use RGB curves rather than second mix RGB node and delete the second mix RGB node. Now add another mix RGB shader, connect the gray color output to its factor and RGB curves output to color 1. Change the color 2 value to gray and little blue in it and connect it to the base color. Duplicate the screen RGB node and put it between screen RGB 1 and mix shader. Connect the gray image color to its second color. I use the mix RGB shader screen blending mode to add in all the created textures. These are binary so all the whites are gonna add up together. Duplicate the second mix RGB node and put it in between mix RGB node and the base color. Connect the output of the screw color image to its factor. Give it a light color. Add a color ramp to fake the metallic map and connect the screws output to its factor. Press Ctrl Shift and click on them to visualize it. Adjust the color and color stops. White color represents 100% metallic and black is 0%. Add another for roughness and do the same. But color it in the inverse direction because black represents zero value which is shinier and the white represents 100% value which is more rough. Connect first to the metallic and second to the roughness value in the principal BHDF shader. You can add as much as textures you want to add. Select the object and start painting with the white color. Before painting, make sure the corresponding image node, in my case, secondary color image node is selected. Press Ctrl to subscribe the current color. Make sure you are working in the texture pen tab. I colored the background first which is gonna be red. Keep saving the modified image so you don't lose anything. I painted white color and inverted image in the Photoshop when I'm done because I was a little confused at the time of recording and that's why I used the invert node to invert from black to white. The brush properties for sculpting and texture painting are similar. So you can adjust the fall off. I used the custom for me. Also enable the stabilized stroke for smoother stroke. Use anchored, line and spaced stroke methods wherever needed. So keep painting, take your time, do this for all the objects. Select the corresponding image nodes to paint on in the shader editor. Then come back to the texture paint tab and paint for that image texture. Repeat for all objects, then switch image nodes and keep painting. And use the reference for colors too. I used this color scheme because I wanted the gun to match my character, that's why. When the texture painting for all objects is done, it's time for baking again. This time I baked diffuse, roughness, metallic and normal map because it's not quite possible to import these nodes in game engines. For baking, I use the same material. Add image node, create the new 4K image, name it diffuse, uncheck the alpha and OK. Duplicate three times and create three new images for metallic roughness and normals. Into the render settings, select the render engine as cycles, bump up the render samples to 200. Under the view layer properties, under the passes, enable denoising data. Into the render settings, select the device GPU. Head to the compositing tab and select use node. Add denoise node, connect the render layer's noisy image to denoise node's image. Denoising normal to normal and denoising albedo to albedo and connect its image output to composite image input. 
Now head back to the shading tab in the render settings under the bake, select bake type to diffuse. Now go to edit preferences, add-ons, search for tiling and enable the auto tile size add-on. Now under the performance, hit the gear icon and select the custom size to 4K, the same size you selected for the image resolution. In the world settings, set the color to complete white. Now select all the objects and join them together by Ctrl J. Into the node editor, select the diffuse map and hit bake. When it's done, save the image file to the desired directory. Change the baking type to roughness, select the roughness image node and hit bake. Save the image file when it's done. Now select the normal image node, change the baking type to normal and hit bake. Save the image when it's done. The procedure for baking metallic map is little different. There is no metallic in the baking type, so instead set it to roughness. Into the shader editor, for every principal BSDF shader, swap the metallic and roughness textures and values with each other. Select the metallic image node and hit bake. When it's done, save the image. And it's done. All you have to do is use these baked images as textures in game engines. Smash the like button if you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching. Hope this video was helpful. Also, subscribe to this channel if you love devlogs and want to see this kind of tutorials and other game dev stuff. See you in the next one.